morning. I'm taking an offer from Olivet Baptist Church for our morning worship service. Uh, we having some computer difficulties on the live streaming, so the service will not be live streamed. Uh, we try to contact all our subscribers. For those who are watching, uh, this will be uploaded later on today uh, for the service. And uh, Reverend Ananias is not going to be here today. And so we're going to move forward and worship the Lord like we always have been doing. And I want to thank everybody for participating. And I want to welcome everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. As we start our devotion, we'll turn to Deuteronomy. The sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and we'll start at the fourth verse. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto the children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when they walk it by the ways and when they lie down and when they rise up. May the word of God do rich you in your heart and soul this morning. Amen. New Testament scripture comes from 1 Timothy. First Timothy, starting at the 12th verse. And these, these words we'll find in 1 Timothy, Timothy, starting at the 12th verse. This is Paul writing a letter to Timothy. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointed me to his service. Even though I was a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was pure, was poured out, on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save a sinner of whom I am the worst. But for this very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who will believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invincible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come at this time, Lord, to prepare our hearts and prepare our minds for the worship service. We come at this time, Heavenly Father, recognizing that you are God Almighty and that your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, who was laid and buried and arisen and right now sits at your right hand and is our advocate, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who promised that we would, when he leave, when he had left, he would not leave us alone and provided us with a comforter. Gracious Heavenly Father, your plan for salvation with the Trinity involved is a great plan. It's something that man cannot, cannot have a concept of. But we have a heart. And that's where all your love goes is to our hearts, Heavenly Father. Oh, gracious God, we come to worship you this morning, Lord. We come to sing thy songs. We come to read thy scriptures. We come to tap our feet, clap our hands. We come to give thee the praise and glory. We ask you, Heavenly Father, accept our praise, accept what we say, because we love you, Heavenly Father, for you have loved us first. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father, what, that, for what you are going to do. Continue to be with us and strengthen us and guide us, Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. We continue, continue on with our devotion. Oh, gracious and wonderful God, we able and thank we thank you, first of all, that we have this privilege and opportunity that we can come this morning. We know Heavenly Father was only by you, and as it was mentioned, only by you and your authority that we are here in this present today. We pray, Heavenly Father, that our hearts are prepared to worship you, not just now, but before, because you're a God that we should seek always and that always have within our heart. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we would lift you up today in songs, lift you up today, Lord, in our prayers, and whatever worries or burdens that we carry today, Lord, we give them over so that they will not be an influence or indirect position in our lives that we cannot be able to worship you because you give us all the strength to worship. You are deserving of all the worship that we can give today. You have shown that by us being and being, being present today. You've shown that by us to have the strength and cultivating the faith that we have in you, knowing that you are all in all. So we pray, Lord, to you today that we will lift you up, praise you. We will glorify your holy and righteous name and we will give you all the honor and glory that you deserve. Yes. In your son's name we pray, amen. amen.
This is our altar call. Amen. This is an opportunity to come to the altar, speak to God. I am just an instrument, but he's available to all of us all the time. Thank you, us, for that song. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity come to the altar. We come for many reasons. We come, some for needs. Some come just for prayer. Some come to say thank you. But the song we just heard, forgiveness. We all have something to forgive for. Lord, your forgiveness, I cannot sing it, but it's like honey on my lips, on our lips. Holy Father, we thank you for this opportunity right now. We come at this time of our service, just wanna ask for help. The only that you could give. Some might need help financially. Some might need help personally. Some might just need help just because they're having issues. Oh, Heavenly Father, but you know every thought that we have. You know every concern. Heavenly Father, you know every hair on our body. Heavenly Father, you know us. And we thank you, Lord, for who you are, the one and only true living God. And there is no other God beside thee. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for him who died on the cross for our sins. For whatever sins that we had, he took care of it all. Doesn't matter how small or how big. Once we accepted your son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, he did it all. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. As Reverend Ananias says, our roommate who is with us 24 hours a day, 365 days a week. Heavenly Father, sometimes we want to put them in our back pocket, pull them out only when we need them. But Heavenly Father, we love when he's in our heart and speaking to us, guiding to us, ministering to us, talking to us, teaching us guiding us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for who you are. You are a forgiving God. You are a holy God. You are a merciful God. You are an all-knowing God. You are a sanctified God. Heavenly Father, you are just a loving God. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for all that you had done. We thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be at the altar and praying to you. Heavenly Father, continue to watch over us. Continue to be with us. At this time, we're going to have a meditation moment, quiet moment, for I know I cannot speak for everybody, and we all have an opportunity to say what we have on our minds.
altar is for everybody, Heavenly Father. And we realize that. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. Please be with us this day in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and worshiping you in our tithes and offering. Heavenly Father, bless those who gave. Heavenly Father, bless those who had the desire to give but could not. Use these to uplift your son, Jesus Christ, and in his name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. I'm Deacon Eric Bader, and I'll be here this morning to bring you the message this morning. Um, as was mentioned before, Reverend Ananias is not here, but he will be back next Sunday for part three of us dealing with trials. Okay, we want to thank all the individuals who are on stream watching. We also want to thank Benaiah Church of L.A. also. I want to thank you that. Uh, we don't know how long the difficulty of technology will take for us to be up to speed, but we pray that it be fast as soon as possible. So today, as we, but we're going to continue with trials. Uh, we're going to continue with trials because we'll see how essential it is that we have an attitude to address them and deal with them, but we're going to also that they are essential in part of our lives of de developing a relationship with God. Because when we look at these trials, we look at situations that we have within our lives and we all experience. We all want the quick fix on trying to deal with something that we have. We always want the quick fix that we can, re that can get us out of that situation as quick as possible because we don't want to be dealing with the development of our relationship with God. Because that's basically what the trials are. Because you can go to the, you can go to the pharmacist, and you want to get your medicine refilled, and you're sitting in line, and it takes time in the line, then it goes through the process that you're trying to get the medicine what you order. That takes some time or effort. You're trying to get something repaired on your car. It takes some time or effort. Your, your computer goes down. It takes some time and effort. So we live in a life that we want it to be repaired soon and quick. We don't have time to be waiting. So these trials that we'll see, that we talk about, that we've been talking about, that Reverend Ann and I have been sharing with us over a period of time, is to develop our faith and develop our closeness with God. If we look at that, we'll, and I'll go more into it and we'll look at it, because it actually is the fruit of development in the relationship that we have with God. Now, this is interesting. Here's my scripture coming out of James, and I'm going to show you something that's interesting. Go to James. Our scripture would be James Chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. <clears throat> My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diver temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberal and unbridled, not and it shall be given to him. But it let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For that that's wavering is like a wave of sea driven with the wind and tossed. You may be seated. Gracious God, we thank you again, as always, that we have the opportunity today to learn your word. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would direct the Holy Spirit within our lives, the understanding of what, how we apply what you give us, how it is effective in our lives, and the purpose of it in creating and developing us. So we pray, Lord, that we give an insight of it today and that you will always get the glory in reference to what we see and do. In your son's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you look at this, and I want you to turn, now turn over to 1 Peter, what, what we've been studying, and look at this with these two writers. Peter writes this. Peter writes, Peter, I am apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered. James says this. James, I am a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes that are scattered. So both tribe, tribes, Jesus... James is talking to the Christian saints. We mentioned the 12 sides, tribes. Peter is talking about the Gentiles and also the Christians, Gentiles. But he makes reference to all of them that they have scattered in a position of trials. For whatever reason that they scattered, one was persecution because of the death of Stephens, which James is talking about. And the other one is in reference to the situation being under Roman rulership that they have scattered because of the situations of persecution, but also the situations of things coming about 
that they didn't want to be dealing with. Things that, the things that we see in our lives, sometimes we don't want to deal with. But both of these brothers said this. James says this, count it all joy when you fall into a diverse situation. Peter says this, is that, is that uh, Peter says, uh, uh, he says this in six, rejoice in the situation. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now, for a season. It needs to be that ye are heavenly through manifest temptations. So both of them talk about joy and rejoice in the situations that we go through, that God puts for us. And you might ask that, I don't, like I said, I, how can you rejoice standing in line waiting on my medicine to get refilled? How can I rejoice in a time that I'm waiting on somebody to do a repair or do work that I need? How do I wait on a situation that I might need to do whatever I need to do quick and in a hurry. But when we look at this, like I said, John, James, excuse me, James and Peter both address trials that individuals will have to deal with. They both are addressing individuals that have scattered. James is writing to the 12 tribes and Peter is also writing to the believers of Christ. So we will see some of the similarities of behavior from Christian people and how we are able to deal with it. We must realize, though, that suffering trials do grieve us and make us trouble in our relationship with each other, also make us unhappy, also causes us sometimes to fall into a state of depression or anxiety. We don't understand some reasons why of this, but it's because of a balance that we lack in our lives. Is a reason why that we are given the trials, because the trials are to set up the foundation that we have, to develop the foundation that we have, to have in our relationship with Christ, and to be able to draw on our faith and build on it. Both James and Peter presented what to us? An attitude of how we are to approach each trial. One says, my brother counted all joy. The other brother said, it's greatly to rejoice. It's greatly to rejoice or count it all joy when we enter into trials, into situations. We look at it in this manner. One says to, for patience and one says for perseverance. It, depending on what Bible you're looking at, that's what it says. I am going to emphasize on the perseverance because it's an active word. It's one that is, for, is forceful and it's one that drives the individual to succeed in the trial. Nothing against patience. Nothing against patience. There is times that we need patience. Both of them are fruitful qualities of an individual. And we both have to develop both of those. Because if we look at those, those are developed through the faith, but they're required of God. But if, press, if we persevere and you know, move through, then we're able to develop that patience that we need during that time that we need it which are spiritual gifts, as I mentioned. Look at Romans, look at Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans, the fifth chapter. I'll give me a little time to get there. Come on, Romans, where you at? Romans, the fifth chapter, and we're going to look at this real quick once I get there. And Romans says this in the fifth chapter, and let's look at the fifth chapter and look at starting at the third verse in that. And it says this, and not, and not only so, but be glory in tribulations. Did we go again? Trials. Also knowing that tribulations work patience. It works patience. And it works your patience. You stand in a line, it's working your patience. And don't let nobody irritate you also because you're going to become Impatient, experience and experience hope, and hope make it not shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. But because of him, we have the work of patience and experience. So we have those for what reason? Because things will come along 
in our lives that we will need patience, that we will need that. So we look at spiritual gift. They're spiritual. Each of them are a spiritual gift. Each of them is a spiritual gift that we need to develop it in ourselves. And that develops us for a certain reason, for a certain purpose. God has a purpose and has a reason for us. And the reason and purpose for us is to have a, a, a spiritually conduct, a holy conduct on how we operate and how we move. And have patience at time. Because God doesn't respond always on our call. He responds when we need, need, when he needs us to respond. But understand this. He might do the situation through another individual. And one that you least think about it. Because I was thinking about it when I was reading the scripture and came along. You remember Elijah? And he went to the woman. And he asked the woman for water and, and for something to eat. And she says, all I got enough is to take care of my kids. Okay, but Elijah was going through, a, a, Elijah witnessed that during that time, we could say a famine was happening at that time. And so he goes to her. Now, now think about this. You're looking for help for, to go through a situation that you're going through in reference to famine. And God sends you to a woman who is poor and only has enough to feed her son. But he sends you there. You have to ask yourself a question. Why would you send me to her in the dire state that she's in? Where it was to strengthen her faith to trust in God, and by her trusting in God, would strengthen his faith and trust in God that God would do what he said he would do. So that's why it's essential that we rely on God and let him be the leader within our lives and develop the strength that we need and have the patience and faith that we need to work through it. James says, James says that every man is, if you go back to James and look at James in that fifth chapter we talk, I mean that first chapter of James, in that 14th verse, he says this. James says that every man is, is tempted when he is drawn away from it, drawn away by what? His own evil and what? In his own desires. So you can't blame it on the dog. You can't blame it on the car. It's by who? Ours. Look, look, let's look at that. Look at Genesis. Go to Genesis 3 and 6. We've all read this story. And it says in 3 and 6, it says this. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, and took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave it unto, unto, un, also unto her husband, and her, and he did eat. Well, you know that that tree was sitting in that garden for a while, right? And so Eve walked about that tree, I don't know how many times. But it wasn't until now that the devil put the thought in her eye, I mean her mind, excuse me, in her mind of possibly going by and taking some of that fruit. See, all he did was just set the groundwork. And the groundwork is that he knew her state. So he knew that as she walked consistently by that tree, he knew that there was going to be one time that he can sit down to her and say, go ahead and give it a shot. Because you surely not gonna die. Because he was saying you surely not gonna die. But give it a shot. So when we are by our own temptation, by our own desires, by our own lust, that's when we fall into these dire situations. We can't blame it on nobody else. We can't blame it on nobody else because we've been talking about. Uh, I think it was about a month ago when we were talking about. Yeah, when we were talking about trials and talking about trials, there's a balance that we must have in our lives. And the balance, the balance comes to our position in Christ. And if we don't have that balance in life, then we'll be tempted to fall off or be tempted as uh, Eve did in her situation, with, her situation with the tree. So there must be a balance. But the only way to balance that, that, develop that balance is that we must be able to develop a sense of understanding, but also develop that heart of perseverance to not allow us to fall off into those situations. Is that, is, 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 that's, why you, that's why you always see Paul use his analogy of an athlete or of a soldier. 
because you got to stay persistent in your work and you have to stay persistent and constantly working on your craft and be, and, and be able to work through those situations that you have because things are going to come up. As a runner, you constantly got to consistently run, run, run and build that endurance. In battle, you got to continue to work and work, work on those situations and training so that you can be able to be able to respond immediately and build that attitude so that when you get into that situation that you're stable enough to balance and work through it. So perseverance has his work because when we look at this, he says this, going back to James, he says this, count it all joy when you fall into diver temptation, knowing this, that trying of your faith work at patience. So, so faith has to be developed. And this is, a, this is a very important because the faith that you develop is the faith that gives you the balance within your life to help you to deal with the things that you have to deal with. Put it in this way. To accomplish trials, a believer must have the faith, must be tested on the faith, and must be desired to have the, the results of completing the work that is set forth for them. Because it says this and says, and we must, it says this, and we finish this work, the believer lacks nothing from it because of the strength and virtue that it develops. Because he says this, perfect works, but when let them, in the fourth verse, he says work, but let patience have her perfect work. So you work that patience. Let it have, develop that patience so that it has its perfect work in your life. That's what James is saying. Develop that perfect work so that your life is stable and that you're able to deal with the things that you have to deal with. You don't receive it because you don't ask of it. Faith. You don't ask for it, you don't receive it. We don't have enough confidence in ourselves to go to God and ask God to help us do. But when we do ask God to help us do, we don't have the patience to wait through it or the patience to work through it. You take the time to work through it. Faith is the, faith is the confidence that God will give us in our requests. It's the development of character. It's the development of balance. It's the development of position that is shown by the work that God has within us, by the Holy Spirit which he planted in us teaching us discipline, which we need in this life that's undisciplined. Allow trials in our lives to prepare to, for a purpose for the future things that will approach us and come to us. That we all faith develop and we look at in 2 Peter, if you just turn over to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, the first the first chapter of Second Peter, Peter, and it says in the fifth, who are they kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time, through faith, wherein greatly rejoice, though now for a season, it needs to be you are in heaven throughout manifest temptations. That word rejoice comes up again. Rejoice through the situations that we go through. We should be, we should be ready to challenge ourselves and ready to meet the challenge, ready to go through and be able to win the battle that we have set in front of us. Faith is linked up with God. Peter gives us an illustration of that as we just read, gives the records of the situation and the birth of what takes place and the promise associated with it. Christians participate in this through the divine nature and make us and are secure with it in a position with Christ. Make every effort, every effort to hold to, every effort to hold to their faith. We make every effort. When a person, when you look at a person jogging and you're looking at the, the things jogging and working, they have faith in their working and their faith in their, their workout and the faith that they can achieve what they have achieved. And it's said in them as they constantly, consistently work at it. And we have to constantly, consistently work at it. Don't dismiss it. Don't put it aside. Meet it as a challenge. Make every effort to meet it as a challenge. If you process the qualities, increasing measures that will keep you from being ineffective, 
and unproductive. But if you have the knowledge and understanding the will of God, it can carry you through. It can carry you through. See, Eve just fell. He kept being persistent, and Eve kept walking through and not being able to make it through the situation carried through. But I want to read something. It was something that we had a long time ago. Faith, and what it was written by, is the, the topic is how worship can improve your faith, improve your health, excuse me. And it was written by two doctors. And these two doctors wrote this. Faith is spiritually and has a sense of purpose all has a beneficial effect on one's emotional and, phys and, phys and physical and mental health. Belief is a divine plan for one's life can foster optimism and hope, attitudes that can boost mental and physical health. Spiritual practice, such as prayer, can reduce stress and anxiety. Spiritually and faith can even affect our physical health. It was a study, more than 1,700 older adults, research of Duke University, Medical Center found that those practiced religious had a better immune function than those who didn't. Most studies have shown that religious involvement and spiritualities are associated with a better health outcome, including greater longevity, coping skills, health-related qualities of life, even during terminal illness, and less anxiety and depression and suicide. Just as important as the eternal attitude of religion can foster also social connections it can bring. Belonging to a faith organization can foster the sense of community and, and that missing is so many people's lives. That's missing in so many people's lives. People who attend services regularly tend to have more close friendships which can turn to lead to better health outcomes. Harvard's research said this, have also found that men and women who attend services weekly reduce the risk of dying at a death dispersed of 33 to 68% respectively. Now these are doctors writing about faith and walking, having a spiritual faith. They're writing how important it is and effective within our lives. It's our faith that de demonstrates praise, honor, and glory to Christ. And we, 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 we experience that today. We experience that today. Thank you, Wes, for that. We experience that today. By having the faith and by the relationship that we had with Christ, by us coming in ready to worship, we had, uh, we had demonstrated the praise for what he's done for us. That was all. We give all glory to him in reference to that. Because we walk by faith. We walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Because God wants our faith to be absolute. He wants us to have absolute faith. He wants us to absolutely depend on him. And anything that we go through, in all situations that we encounter, in our development of our lives, in things that we go through, and everything we have, he wants us to depend on him. Now, through, now through testing it, now we go back to we go back to James and James says this. James says, knowing this, the trying of your faith work of patience, but let patience have her perfect work. That it may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. But how do you get to perfect? Only way to get to perfect is to work toward it, is to persevere towards it, is to work towards it, is to allow, is, is to is to a degree almost saying that, God, let them come to me. Let them come to me. Let, me. let let me challenge, bring them on so I can challenge them. You never see, you never seen an athlete walk away from a challenge? You ever see Steph Curry walk away from a shot that she, he can't make? But there's one thing that Steph Curry can't do, y'all. He can't spin the ball on his finger. They did. They did. They showing. They were showing him, and he he couldn't spin the ball on his finger, and got mad, and threw the ball across the court. So LeBron couldn't do it. There was only two other people that we don't know of that could do it. But out of those, out of that basketball team, they showed him. But Curry couldn't do it. 
Curry couldn't develop. He didn't have the patience to go through and work through it, but he could not spin the ball on his finger. That was just a little sidebar. But we look at this. How do we, how do we seek and get to faith, right? We ask through wisdom, right? Look at Proverbs. Proverbs 1.24 says this. And it says this, what Proverbs 124 says, it says this, because you have called and you refuse. I gave you the wrong one. Yeah, no, 124 Proverbs, 124. Because you have called and you refuse. I have stretched my hand out and, that man be, and no man regarded. You called, but you refused. You called on it, but you didn't call it with any sincerity of it. But if you go over to chapter 2 in Proverbs, stay in 2 and go to chapter 2, verse 10. It says, when wisdom entered into thy heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, the, then now we see, shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the ways of the evil man, from the man that speaketh for these things. Until then, till you believe and trust in it, till you accept it, then that's when it works, when the wisdom will work. When we have this, when the wisdom work, but not until then. So we see the combination. We got to have faith. We develop the faith, and the faith is developed through the works that we do. And then now we have to have faith to believe and trust in the wisdom and knowledge that we receive, that we can produce what we can produce out of that. But if you don't ask, it don't come. But if it's not sincere to you, you do not receive it also. Faith is an extraordinary principle to link up with God. It's extraordinary. We must have it. It's needed. It's very important. God wants us to rely on him. God wants us to call on him in the time of need and situations you want. He wants to show you that he is able there to respond. But the thing about it is that you have to develop it. You have to remember it's very essential. It's an essential part of the Christian life. We look at James. We look, go back to James and we look at James 1. Go back to James. And look at James 1, chapter 1. For the people online, I'm talking about chapter 1, excuse me. James chapter 1, and go to verse 13. Let no man say, say he was tempted. I'm tempted of God. That God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted by any man. For every man is tempted then and drawn away from his own lust in his own tithes. Then when he thus has received it, bring it forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bring it forth death. So we see what happens in that. But we say this, and in the 17 says, but every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. So when we stay disciplined to it, when we call upon God to give us the guidance we need and wisdom, we're able to make it through. But it's, got to, it's, but it's got to be a consistent balance of Jesus Christ. It's got to be a consistent balance of allowing Christ to work in our lives, allowing Christ to move us, allowing Christ to work through us, and allow Christ to be the leader within us. And I want to lead us with this. Be, but for you to be strong and to do not give up, for the work will be rewarded at the end. So as we work on it, as we continue to work to strive to live this Christian life, Believe that you will win the reward at the end. You will encounter situations in life. But it's, remember this, is that it's not something that God has given you that you can't handle. Because like he said, I will give you no more than what you can handle. But we have to develop the attitude that we're able to make it through and allow God work in us. God, we thank you again for this day, Lord. We thank you for this brief message that you have with us in reference to faith and wisdom and perseverance through it. And we pray, Lord, that we see a lot of things that are going on in this world that we live in now. And we know that these things are to draw us away from you, are to even question our faith and question are you real. But today, Lord, we want to understand that we rejoice in all that we do because we know rejoicing develops that faith that we have and that you have given to us. So we pray to the Lord is that as we continue to learn about trials, 
We want to let our trials, we want to be successful in our trials. And that success is not one that we are, can do it, but it's only through you. And it's only through you and only the person that, only God that can do it for us. We need you every day. We need you every hour. But let us trust and believe that you're there to give to us as requested from the truth of our heart in, the, in, your, in your position. And may we always give you the praise in your son's name we pray. Amen. Remember, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Just keep fighting. And don't give up. Now, as we close, we'll give the benediction. I'll give the benediction. May we all stand. May all God, may, may the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, you Smith, thank you. And may God keep you. <laughs>